Let's do some myth busting. One of my least favorite myths revolves around new dentists, debt, around dental students. And here to help me is Rob Ziliak with Buckingham Strategic Wealth. Rob, how are you doing? Great, Chris. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you for helping me clear the air for our younger colleagues out there. The myth goes like this. You're graduating with some amount of student debt. Certainly some people are hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. And because of that, well, you got to get rid of the bad debt before you invest in retirement, before you uh, get a loan to start or buy a practice. So pay down that debt, get it darn close to zero before you make any of these uh, larger decisions in life, saving for retirement, buying or starting a practice. What do you think about that, that myth? Well, Chris, not only is it a myth, it's it's actually a fallacy. Uh, it is maybe some of the worst advice uh, a recent graduate could receive uh, from anyone. Uh, the The very simple reality is that compounding growth as an investor is the single greatest benefit that any individual will ever have in their lifetime and certainly within their career. So a, a recent dental school graduate is by far mathematically going to come out ahead by having a strategy of saving and paying down their debt as a simultaneous strategy. So you say str strategy is, I think, the operative word, right? Someone says, well, gee, I have to pay $1,500 a month or whatever it might be to their student loan. They're, they're just now earning their first paychecks as an associate it can be hard for them to, to think about how do I put some money aside for retirement and what vehicle they go into. Can you give me a little bit of advice on how that strategy starts to come together? Sure, absolutely. Uh, we like to think of it as, as having 10 strategies for the creation, management, and distribution of wealth over the course of a lifetime. And the very first one is pay yourself first and it's followed closely by always know where your money should go and always know where your money does go. And those are key principles up front that any recent dental school graduate should be contemplating to ask the questions first before simply writing checks and, and uh, thinking later. And help me out, you'll be on the, uh, uh, at the Principles of Practice Management Conference in Indianapolis, your, your hometown there, July 12th and 13th. You're gonna be on our Transitions Roundtable panel session at lunch, uh, which is always a fantastic Q&A session with experts like yourself. Uh, help me out, how does this student debt work with investing in a business, getting uh, applying for and getting a loan to start or buy a practice? Please help me in educating people that your student debt isn't as big of a factor as you might think, right? It's not as big of a factor. It's a bigger emotional factor than it is a financial factor. In fact, uh, the dental specific lenders, most banks that are very familiar with the dental profession will very quickly dismiss the young dentist, the associates concerns that they can't afford to buy in. What they're much more concerned about is the cash flow and the financial health of the practice that the associate is considering buying. They are more focused on that than they are on the individual's ability to repay their student debt. Rob, let's consider this myth busted. It is such a fallacy. I love that word you used, I completely agree. And maybe it is more of the emotional component that, that keeps these myths running. Well, uh, we'll see you in Indianapolis uh, for the PPM conference. Uh, we'll be busting some more myths there, I'm sure. Looking forward to seeing you there. Looking forward to it as well, Chris. Thanks so much. Thank you.